Welcome to Lincoln Park Zoo. We are thrilled to have you. Today on Stay Tuned to the Zoo, we are going to learn how the Japanese macaque troop right here at the Regenstein Macaque Forest learned to voluntarily participate in touchscreen cognition research sessions. You might be asking yourself, what does cognitive or cognition mean? So let's start there. Cognitive refers to the mind. So these touchscreen computer puzzles are allowing us the chance to learn more about how these social monkeys think and how they learn. Today, we are going to get the chance to observe a cognition session in action and learn more about how science and animal care go hand in hand here at Lincoln Park Zoo. First, let's orient you to the space here at the North Shelter and to the researcher. Behind me, you'll see Sarah, one of the researchers in the Lester E. Fisher Center for the Study and Conservation of Apes. This is one of the many conservation and science programs right here at Lincoln Park Zoo, and their goal is to study primates in the wild and also at the zoo. This is one of the examples of how they study primates using that touchscreen computer as a tool to learn more about their mind. Our researcher is inside the clear research cube and you'll notice this space is broken up into a couple of different sections. The researcher side and the monkey side, which is right behind me. You might also notice in this research booth that there are four touchscreen computers. Remember, these are the tools that our researcher is using to give the monkeys those puzzles that they can choose to solve. The two computers on our researcher side are her opportunity to run the puzzles and the two computers on the monkey side are their chance to solve those puzzles. It's really important to remember that these research sessions are set up with the monkey's needs in mind. First and foremost, these sessions are voluntary. That means it's a choice for the monkeys. They do not have to participate if they don't want to. And they can leave this research booth at any time. We also want to make sure that we're taking into account their social needs. Japanese macaques are primates and like other primates are very social. The Japanese macaque troop here at Lincoln Park Zoo consists of 13 individuals, adults and juveniles, males and females. And we wanna make sure that everyone is getting the chance to participate if they choose to. Right behind me, you'll see two research cubes side by side, each with their own computer. This is going to allow two monkeys to solve the different puzzles at the same time if they choose to. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, Japanese macaques have a pretty strict hierarchy. That means some monkeys are higher ranking than other monkeys. And you might have guessed it, those higher ranking monkeys will get the chance to participate in enrichment sessions like this first. So we want to make sure even those low ranking individuals in the troop have the choice to participate if they want to. You'll also notice in between each cube is a glass. This glass is really fancy. It's called smart glass. Our researcher can make this glass opaque, which means it blocks the view between the two monkeys and the separate booth solving the puzzles. This again is accounting for that hierarchy. So if a low ranking monkey is solving right next to a high ranking monkey, our researcher can turn that glass on and give each monkey some privacy as they solve their puzzle. This cool smart glass was put in place to also study social learning and cooperation when the monkeys are participating in these research sessions. Think of the last time you did a group project. Did you learn from someone in your group? Did you cooperate? These are all questions that we are looking to ask of these social monkeys here at Lincoln Park Zoo. What you might not be able to see is on the computer, there is an end screen. Think of a video game that you might have solved. At the end of your session, you're usually gonna see a game over. Each individual monkey has their own end screen, a certain color or a pattern on the computer. And our researcher will show them this end screen when they are finished with their session for the day. This is to ensure that every monkey in the troop gets the chance to solve the puzzle. That way, a high-ranking individual won't just sit in the research cube for the entire time that our researcher is here. Last but not least, our researcher always wants to respect the health of the monkeys. So you might notice that she's wearing personal protective equipment when she's in the research cube, like the masks and the gloves. We're primates too, so this is just a way to keep everyone safe and sound. Hopefully you're getting the chance to really see the monkeys in action during their voluntary session today. What I love about this is the monkeys can leave at any time using that swinging door right behind me. 
We really want this session to be a positive experience for the monkeys. They're so comfortable in the space that you might even see the young monkeys in the troop playing inside the research cube. One of my favorite things to see. You're probably asking yourself too, how did these snow monkeys learn to participate in these cognitive research sessions? Well, we are always using positive reinforcement to get the monkeys to learn how to participate and to learn how to solve the individual puzzles. Positive reinforcement usually comes in the form of a highly preferred food item. So Sarah, our researcher today, has food items like peanuts and jungle pellets, which are really highly nutritious chow. Using these positive reinforcement is a way to really make this a positive experience as well, which I mentioned is really important. So when the monkeys come into the research cube and they touch the computer to start solving the puzzle for the day, when they solve the puzzle correctly, they're gonna hear a sound accompanied by that food reward. Sarah, our researcher, will send that food reward right down that white PVC pipe. I like to call it a food slide. If the monkeys don't solve the puzzle correctly, they're gonna hear a different sound. They won't get the food reward right away, but they'll get the chance to try again. You heard me. Mistakes are all a part of these cognitive research sessions. So if you've made a mistake while learning something new, you probably learned from that mistake. So mistakes are all part of the process. Each individual monkey, like I mentioned, will have the chance to participate until the end of their session. And hopefully, Sarah, our researcher, will have the chance to invite most of the troop, whoever wants to participate for the day. On my iPad here, I have a couple of the puzzles that the monkeys have gotten the chance to solve. Right in front of me is a white background with two colored circles on my iPad, a blue circle and a red circle. Now, what's really important to note is our researcher never taught the monkeys what to do. They figured everything out by trial and error. So you're gonna get the chance to do just that. What would you do if you saw these two circles on the screen? Did you say touch them? If so, you're exactly correct. But there are two circles, so you have to decide which circle you wanna to touch first. Did anyone say blue? If you chose blue, which is one of my favorite colors, so I understand, that wouldn't have been the right answer right away, but you're gonna get the chance to try again. Now, which color circle would you press? Did you choose the red one? Oh, you're exactly correct. After you touch the red one, you'd have the chance to touch the blue one, and then that puzzle would reappear, giving you a chance to solve again. What Sarah will do during these research sessions is record all the data and observe the behaviors of the monkeys while they're participating. So she can collect that and her and animal care can work together to help continue to make really informed decisions when it comes to animal care. Most of these puzzles that the monkeys are getting the chance to solve are what we refer to as welfare-based puzzles. That means they are learning about the personalities and the preferences of the monkeys, and animal care can continue to use that data to take the absolute best care of these Japanese macaques here at Lincoln Park Zoo. These sessions are a chance to encourage those natural behaviors, encourage those species-specific challenges, and offer a great opportunity to exercise their mind. I'm so glad that you got the chance to join us here today at the Regenstein Macaque Forest to see a cognitive research session in action and learn how the monkeys choose to voluntarily participate. I hope you've also gotten the chance to learn a little bit more about how science and animal care go hand in hand right here at Lincoln Park Zoo. Now that you've gotten a chance to peek inside the mind of Japanese macaques and learned a little bit more about the cognition studies taking place here at Lincoln Park Zoo, it's time to test your own cognition. Today we're going to be creating and playing a game that's easy and can be played anywhere. You'll need a few things to get started. A piece of paper. Any size or type will do, but if you can find construction paper, that's the best. Scissors. If you don't have scissors handy, that's okay. We'll talk you through an easy fold and tear method. And a writing tool. The lighter or less dark, the better. We don't want our writing to show through the paper, and you'll see why in a few minutes. Once you have all of your materials, your first step is to fold your paper into nine about even squares. I'm going to do that by folding my paper, hamburger and hot dog way, into thirds. So, let's get started. Let's go hamburger way first. We want them to be about equal. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now, hot dog way. All 
All right, if all went according to plan, you should have nine squares on your paper. Now that our paper is folded into nine squares, we need to separate them. If you have scissors, now is the time to use them. You can go ahead and cut right on those folds. And again, if you don't have scissors handy, that's okay. We're gonna show you an easy fold and tear method. All you need to do is fold and refold on those lines. If you make it nice and crisp, that's even better. You can also flip the paper over and fold the other way to really loosen up the paper at that fold. When you're ready, you can go ahead and tear. I'm gonna finish using my scissors. When we're all done, we will have nine squares that will be our game pieces. The next step is to put the numbers one through nine on each of these cards. Each card is only going to have one number on it, and none of those numbers are going to be repeated. This is where having a lighter colored writing tool comes in handy because we don't want our numbers to show through onto the back side. We're ready to play. Now that we have our game pieces ready to go, it's time to learn how to play. The whole goal is to challenge and strengthen your memory by remembering where the cards are when they're face down. So your first step is to gather up all your pieces. Order doesn't matter because you are gonna shuffle them. I made sure all my cards were face up and I'm just gonna rearrange them a little bit so that I know they're not in numerical order. Then I'm going to place them face down on my table. You can put them in any pattern you want. I'm gonna put them in a big square. All right, your job is to find each card in numerical order. You'll flip them over and try to remember where they live when you place them face down. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how it works. All right, I'm gonna start here. Nine, I know the nine lives here, that's my last one. Six, four, eight, five, two, seven, let's see, three, one. Okay, I kind of know where they all are, and I'm gonna try to get them in numerical order. If I make a mistake, that's okay. All I'm gonna do is put the cards back face down and see if I can build my memory as I go. All right. One, so far so good. Two. Three. I feel like the four was over here. Four. Ooh, six. That's okay. I'll just flip it back over and we'll try again. All right, let's try again and see if I can get the whole way through. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, seven, eight, nine. There we go. It might take you a few times. It took me a few times and that's okay. This game is so great because you can play it anywhere at any time. There's a couple ways to even make it a little more challenging. Play it with someone else. Take turns flipping over those cards and seeing how far in the numerical order you can get. Or make a brand new deck of cards. Put letters on them to spell a nine letter word like alligator and see if you can spell it in the correct order. Thanks so much for playing with us today. How did you customize the game? Was it easy or difficult to play? Let us know in the comments. We're so glad you joined us for Stay Tuned to the Zoo. Subscribe to our channel for new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday.